Namaskar. Uh, good afternoon to everybody in India and good day to those joining us from abroad. Mudit Narayan from the Atal Innovation Mission, Niti Aayog. It's our pleasure today to invite a galaxy of stars from India and abroad to discuss the recent changes in India's space sector. Uh, let me start by inviting Mission Director, Atal Innovation Mission, Mr. Ramanan, to share a few thoughts. I invite Dr. Shivan after that. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. And I do hope everyone is safe and sound in these difficult times following the practices of COVID-19 uh, that we need to uh, adhere to. Uh, I am delighted, and it is indeed a privilege, as the Mission Director of Atal Innovation Mission, uh, to be able to introduce Dr. Sivam uh, for his opening remarks uh, today. Uh, as you may be aware, Atal Innovation Mission is a national initiative uh, for promoting and creating an ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship across the length and breadth of our country. And we are very excited about the recent reforms in the space sector as they will spur innovation and entrepreneurship in this sector. Uh, we are already working closely with ISRO in engaging with Indian startups and in supporting uh, more entrepreneurship through challenges and through joint programs. Dr. Sivan, of course, is a household name in India and needs no real introduction even abroad. However, it is my pleasant uh, duty to be able to share a few words about him. Uh, he is the chairman of ISRO. He holds a master's degree in aerospace from the Indian Institute of Science and a PhD in aerospace engineering from IIT Mumbai. He joined ISRO in the year 1982 and since then has contributed immensely to the launch vehicle programs, especially during the formation formative phase of the PSLV project and the development phase of GSLV and GSLV uh, Mark III. He has played an instrumental role in flight demonstration of reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrator, RLB-TD, and testing of scramjet engines. He is the chief mission architect for 104 satellites launched in a single mission of PSLV and Chandrayaan-2. Dr. Sivan is a fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineering, INAE, Aeronautical Society of India, System Society of India, and Indian so System Society for Science and Engineering. He has received numerous awards, to name a few, Tilak Memorial Award, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai Research Award, Dr. Ben Roy Space Science Award, 20, 2020 IEEE Simon Ramo Medal, and the 2020 Allen E. ML Memorial Award by International Astronautical Federation. Dr. Sivan has numerous research publications in reputed national and international journals and co-authored a book, Integrated Design for Space Transportation System, published by Springer. It is is my wonderful opportunity and privilege to be able to introduce Dr. Sivan to all of you. And I request Dr. Sivan for his opening remarks. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, most respected uh, Kachirangan, sir, our father of Indian space program at present, and uh, respected uh, Vijayagan, sir, and uh, mission director from Niti Aayog and uh, the, uh, Rama, uh, Ramanan sir, that uh, young entrepreneurs and members of the, uh, the panel. First of all, uh, I'm extremely happy that uh, Niti Aayog and uh, Vijayagan sir combinedly arranged this meeting at a timely and it's a very important meeting. In fact, that uh, I would say that this is that uh, that uh, forerunner of that uh, meeting, whatever we are uh, going to have in another uh, fortnight. It is that uh, about the uh, industry meet uh, regarding that reform, whatever we are talking. And I'm happy that uh, this activity is kick-started today itself with that uh, all entrepreneurs in that uh, loop. So on. And uh, first of all, let me also welcome all the members for this important uh, that, uh, discussion, this one. So I would like to say that, and uh, that as we, I, I yesterday mentioned, this our Honorable uh, Prime Minister Modi ji has a very, very larger vision 
of uh, transforming India. And uh, in this, uh, that is vision, definitely that uh, space sector is the one area which need to get uh, reform. The reason I am telling is, I, as all of you are aware, it's nothing new. If you are seeing that uh, the, the type of that uh, the space-based applications, it is that, uh, the, the recent times it is increasing exponentially. And at the same time, that uh, when we are moving towards implementing that uh, digital India program, and this these applications is go, going to explode. And I'm hundred percent sure that. ISRO alone will not be able to meet this uh, the application requirements. All of you are aware. If at all you wanted to make that ISRO to meet this application requirement, ISRO has to be made 10 times or 20 times more big a task. At the same time, we do have seen that uh, across our country, this that uh, the lot of industries, startups, and young minds are coming forward and to take up the, the task of uh, carrying out that uh, space activities. When we are talking space activities, it's including everything. This is a rocket building, satellite building, then launching that satellite and owning the satellite and providing the services, providing the ground equipments, there are many, many things. So definitely when there is a, a hand ready to uh, that uh, they get that uh, to meet the requirements of the nation in an efficient way, we must make use of that. That's one point. Rather than go on trusting on that uh, ISRO to do that activity and go on the pressurizing, no way, because already ISRO has reached a point of inflection. That's one point number one. Point number two, if you are saying that the, the, the global space economy, it is something like uh, the $360 billion that uh, the global space economy. And if you are seeing that uh, how much India contributes for that is a merely 3%. This that reduction that uh, reduced the contribution to the global space economy is mainly because this that uh, the space activities are being only by, done by the government agency, not much people are getting involved. If, if you are seeing that, so it is essential as a requirement from us to enhance, increase that, uh, the, our contributions in the global uh, space economy. And it is our uh, wish to take the maximum out of the $360 billion. That is the second one. Definitely, we have to do something more than the present systems to acquire you know, more and more uh, the, the space economy. That is the second part. Third part, out of this uh, space economy we are seeing, as all of you are aware, Around 2% of that, the entire economy is for the launch vehicle. About 5% is this for that satellite. Nearly 48% is for the ground equipments. And the 45% the economy is for the, uh, mainly for the, the satellite applications. So satellite applications and uh, uh, this that the ground equipments have the maximum benefits for the industries to do it. At the same time, the, the remaining that 7% regarding launch vehicle and satellite, also it is it's, it's essential. Without that uh, 7%, this other 93% uh, we cannot achieve. So it is a, even though it's a risky job for that 7% cases, we have to go. So definitely considering all these things, if you are seeing that, it is the right time to enable the private players to carry out the space-based activities in all the sectors. Of course, when we are uh, enabling the space-based, uh, uh, this one, we have to ensure that we are this space activities is that a very, very that a safety critical activity, security critical activity. At the same time, it's having a lot of uh, that, uh, legal legality and the technical aspect and the quality aspect, many things are there. Now, how to enable this uh, that, uh, young industrialists to make use of the future? We thought that it is the right time to have a, a new system because right now there is no 
uh, mechanism. Yes, I know that uh, the, some of the entrepreneurs here uh, right now attending, so they, they, they themselves had experience of interacting with the, the device. And uh, because there are no formal mechanism, we are not able to uh, that, uh, make them to proceed further. So right now, the, the, what are the mechanisms right now is implemented or recommended by the, 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 the government, the in-space, it's an excellent mechanism. And it's on its own directories, that is uh, technical directories, uh, monitoring directories, and uh, legal, safety, security, or promotional activity, everything will be done by this uh, directory. And uh, this director's input, input will be go, going to that board of the in-space. And the, this board will contain not only from the uh, in-space people, and also from that, uh, the, the members from industries and academia. And uh, this uh, board will uh, uh, that, uh, take these applications as per the recommendations of the technical director and assess. And based on the assessment, they will decide, OK, this is a whether we can go ahead or not, they will give permission to be given for carrying out the space activities. At the same time, definitely that uh, the space activities is a very, very that uh, high uh, that uh, risk as well as that high investment business. At the same time, we don't want to burden the, the that, uh, entrepreneurs with uh, uh, that uh, putting that uh, many the high that uh, investment the burden on them. So what uh, so the, the, this program or this uh, feature has suggested is to allow these people to make use of the costly facilities of ISRO, of course, for payment basis, but the payment can be decided based on the case to case basis. Because suppose that is that uh, some facilities are available to elsewhere and they wanted to make use of our facility, that uh, they, we have to understand what is the requirement and uh, that is the case by case. The cost can be decided based on the, the merit and the cost can be uh, whether it is a full cost or it can be the only consumables or it can be even free, depends on the case because that's what we decided. And uh, this, uh, the, once the decision is made, this, is, this system is independent of the systems in ISRO. So they are allowed to take the decision and on their own without any interference from the existing ISRO mechanism. And uh, once the decision is made, it will be binding on all the uh, team members, including ISO. So they have to implement to ensure that whether it is implemented correctly or not. There's a monitoring mechanism. In case some um, any that uh, the deficiencies happen in the monitoring system, then automatically it will be corrected. Suppose still this the thing is not getting corrected, it will go to TDSAT. So that we have put a very, very safe and uh, the, the safety mechanism for enabling the private team to make this uh, the, the, the system to utilize. I would request all that youngsters as well as that, uh, in the, the, in the, the industries, big industries, small industries, or startups, make use of this uh, the facility and uh, kindly come forward and uh, do the that uh, space activity. And I would request all of us should work together to make India the great technological powerhouse. That is our wish. And I am sure that with this reform, that our uh, that, uh, Honorable Prime Minister's uh, the vision will be getting realized with, uh, by the, the young entrepreneurs the, of the country. So I wish, and I, 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 even I, was, I invited the people to don't wait for this system to be in place. We are ready to receive you now itself. Please start uh, reacting with us. And we are going to have that uh, detailed industry meet maybe in another uh, fortnight. Then we will make the whole system in operation by another three to six months. And that's all I want to tell, sir. Please, uh, uh, I am very, very positive. And uh, we are uh, ready to receive that application now itself. That's what I want to tell you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Shivan, for sharing your insightful thoughts. You are a true inspiration for all the citizens of India from all age groups, ranging from as young as 10-year-old students to as old as 90-year-old seasoned professionals. 
with your permission now i would like to introduce the additional panel members we have a very distinguished panel who have taken the road less traveled in india and are enabling cutting edge technology developments in the space sector we have dr k kasuri rangan the former chairman of isro who has been one of the key architects of the indian space ecosystem along with dr shivan dr kasturi rangan is an astrophysicist by training who contributed to isro's journey for 3 decades and also served as its chairman from 1994 to 2003 and more recently he chaired the committee that was interested to draft the new education policy which is another truly transformational move by the government of india warm welcome to you sir we also have lieutenant general pjs panu who is the former deputy chief of integrated defense staff He raised the country's ever defence cyber agency, defence space agency, and the armed forces special operations division under the integrated defence staff. Sir, you are also an inspiration for the young India, and we really look forward to hearing your thoughts to make India a global leader in space technology. I'm also glad to welcome Dr. Vidushi Bhattacharya, who is a former NASA scientist turned astronaut with three decades' experience in spacecraft development. new space growth academic administration and scientific research she is presently the ceo of astro hub a global startup dedicated to space workforce development through hands on training ma'am there are several aspiring women entrepreneurs who would be delighted to hear your experiences today with us we also have mr rohan ganpati with us who is the ceo and cto of belarix aerospace private limited a new space company involved in the development of advanced in space propulsion systems Rohan is an astro aeronautical engineer and a technologist at heart and Belatrix is the first startup in the country to work with ISRO and DRDO and has also received the national award from the honorable president of India so lots of aspiring entrepreneurs waiting to hear from you Rohan and finally a warm welcome to Mr Park Sarthi Trivedi who is the CEO and co-founder of Skylo who will be launching the world's first 5G IoT network over satellite in India Park has also served on the US delegation to the UN technical body on global aviation and led aerospace missions sponsored by the US Department of Defense NASA and Lockheed Martin and Park has been trained as an aerospace engineer from MIT so like i said we are all extremely delighted to welcome all our panelists and i now request my colleague mudit narayan to ask his first question to our esteemed panel mudit over to you thank you aisha uh, we have a brilliant panel Uh, sir, I just checked YouTube. Gentlemen, we have more than eight hundred people following us, so we have a large audience, well, much bigger than what we normally are used to in conference rooms, auditoria, and that is the power of technology. But with with this technology, also comes a few changes in habits. Um, so, how we'll start is I'll ask one question and request all the uh, panelists to share their thoughts on that, and then we'll go with maybe individual questions. So, Dr. Kasturi Rangan, if I may, I'll start off with you. uh we would like you to share your thoughts on how can partnering with private sector help india to go to new heights in space and then i request each of the panel members to share their thoughts on 2 to 3 minutes on this topic so you have to unmute yourself yeah muted so you please unmute unmute Yes. Is it okay? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I would like to thank my friend Professor Vijay Raghavan and also the members of the Niti Aayog for giving this uh, very unique uh, opportunity of sharing my thoughts on an very important decision that the government, uh, under the leadership of Prime Minister, has taken a, a couple of days back, and on which uh, we had uh, Professor Do Dr. Shivan. giving a little elaboration of the various aspects of this important decision so far as the question that you have raised is concerned the actually the relevance in the present context is i should say it's a logical evolution of a growth model for a space activity in which space industry becomes a significant contributor in the risk investments second it becomes an instrument for multiplier effect of public investments which are already there the third aspect is the space industry provides an increased capacity we have a present level of meeting the aspirations of the users we need to increase this and here is where the space industry can play a role 
and most importantly it addresses one of the major gaps that have been present in the overall ecosystem namely the lack of integrated space industry that is what i mean is an end to end capability to create a total system a rocket a satellite or an application or owning operating space system assuming total risk responding to the market opportunities the policy as stay enunciated here it will certainly address this in the context of what dr shivan said about it being investment incentive intensive and globally regulated sector this is a very important aspect of the space characterization and there a clear understand of the role of the private sector and an environment transparency of regulation if you ask about us in the earlier years in trying to move it further these are some of the concerns which has not been sorted out i think the present policy and the present decision of the government could go a long way in addressing this very critical aspect of industry getting in in a big way and i should also mention that about a million people are today engaged in space activities all over the world if you look at the scale and the scope of the activity for india itself in my view it can generate about 1 to 2 lakh jobs in the not in, in the in the foreseeable future opportunities of course will be set by many others but all i would like to say in conclusion is that the system certainly need to make work that is the most important thing independent and transparent regulation is one aspect of it we need to work out the details a clear policy on technological intellectual property and infrastructure support dr sivan mentioned about it i think not only from isro but also from the other government institutions and policy on government procurement in the sector and renewed national coordination mechanisms with other interministerial mechanisms and so on and an r&d challenge towards the industry that other part of it i also know that the youngsters are very much looking forward to undertake several initiatives in space not only in the in the in the, in the university system where i see interest in building instruments for planetary missions and so on but equally people want to take an end to end system on interplanetary mission i think the present policy can go a long way in assuring them that you can now think of the sky you can think of the space and you can think of any extent and i think there is an answer that will be available from isro and today sriven has made it very clear and that is exactly what the vision of our prime minister is i would like to congratulate the prime minister the government and the department of space uh, for this extraordinary initiative very timely one and it could prove to be transformative uh, so far as the space activity for india is concerned in future thank you Thank you, sir, for your encouraging words, Dr. Vidushi. If I can invite you to share your thoughts at this point as a representative of the private sector and somebody who's seen the space sector across many countries, the role of the private sector and how India can benefit from these recent changes. Uh, thank you very much. I am very honored to be here on this distinguished panel, and I really appreciate the opportunity. I am very excited about in space and what ISRO is doing in general because um, I really see the hugest talent pool in the world sitting in India right now. As we heard from Dr. Shivan, we're talking about a current global economy that's three hundred sixty billion dollars, which is just mind blowing. But we're also looking at an economy that's predicted by many people to be worth three trillion dollars by the year twenty forty. And the only way that we're actually going to get there is to bring talented young people on board from the private sector. I get um, job applications and requests probably at least a couple times a week from young people in India. And to date, I've been telling them, well, you know, you really there are some opportunities that will be coming in the future, and we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But keep your enthusiasm; don't be discouraged. And we're at this point right now where we have this incredible technical talent, and we have talent in other areas as well. and it's going to be wonderful seeing young people come on board and be engaged and not just that we have talented people across all backgrounds not just in stem but in other areas as well as well and i'm really looking forward to see what kinds of ideas people can have to actually help us save the world today uh, we're in this uh, covid era and what's going to happen to the world globally after the post covid economy I think space plays a unique position in trying to solve some of these problems and if we can synthesize space-based data and services with ground-based technology I think we'll come up with some very unique solutions for everything from um supply chains to food security so I'm very optimistic about the future and I'm really looking forward to whatever is in store so thank you for the opportunity Thank you ma'am uh, General Panu 
your experience with the establishing the defense space agency and how you see the changes recently to serve the broader purpose uh, thank you mudit uh, for asking me this question uh, firstly uh, let me begin with uh, thanking uh, uh, professor vijay raghavan and uh, neeti ayog for giving me this opportunity to speak here um, whatever has happened in the new policy uh, change uh, is music to my ears um, having uh, spent about 40 years in uniform Uh, we start a life with walking the terrain, and uh, every time there was a question, "What is behind the ridge line?" Uh, you had to literally climb the ridge line and find out what is there behind it, uh, and therefore we discovered the importance of high ground. Uh, space is the ultimate high ground; it is actually the God's eye. In fact, this technology itself is the uh, technology of God, because it sees everything from top. It enables everything. it helps you in any which way and it connects the world yeah, the world has become a uh, uh, one global village because of technologies such as uh, space which connects people which directs people as far as the military is concerned i find that when i was involved in raising the, uh, the uh, defense space agency at the same time i was also raising the cyber agency and the special forces division and i found that there was a correlation in all these way technology was the major thread which connected uh, the entire requirement and met the entire requirement to make possible the revolution in military affairs uh, we invited uh, a lot of uh, 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 experienced people from isro from the drdo and also youngsters as uh, dr seven had said youngsters from the startups and we found that the kind of knowledge that they possessed the kind of ability that they possessed and if we bring them all together they can find solutions to huge amount of um, issues that we face uh, not only in defense but even in other sectors uh, of industry and in fact you know there is no discipline which can is, is not touched by the space uh, agency so really speaking uh, the synergy uh, that is now going to be created between the available agencies that is the isro and uh, the drdo along with the uh, startups these brilliant youngsters i think are going to bring in so much of value uh, rather than having uh, uh, supply based uh, capability i think we will have a demand based um, a possibility to bring in huge amount of uh, resources uh, which the country really needs uh, we will be able to enable the industry 4.0 to really translate into the military revolution uh, which i say that the fourth generation warfare is going to be only possible when we talk about digital india we also talk about di digital warfare um, lately you would have heard uh, that we talk about uh, the digital warfare it means non contact battlefield uh, you know what's happening in our northern uh, borders i was commanding a corps there and uh, having walked and flown over most of the areas where today we have an engagement with the pla uh, that those are the kind of areas where you find that on the media itself they are showing you live images uh from the satellites uh with satellite what resolution it gives you uh, there is huge amount of decision making that goes on in fact space is the one which not only brings the war to the war room but is also a great enabler to make sure that the military machine of the future which is going to be based on the ai which is going to be based on digital platforms uh the uh, you know systems such as C four I two star as I talk about uh, it is it is not only the command control communication and computers but also it gives you information intelligence for the surveillance and target acquisition along with reconnaissance you know all this can be only put together by this technology which I call the uh, uh, god of all technologies that is the space uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, allowing me to speak uh, here but I I find there's a great potential we have a huge pool of specialized Uh, youngsters now who will join in together in the liberal uh, uh, regime together in the liberal uh, uh, regime which is not going to be uh, you know stifled by uh, tight regulations uh, i saw a whole lot of youngsters you know who were looking at the space but you know their their feet was literally uh, under under some uh, regulation which nobody understood now we talk about this in space now this indian national space promotion and authorization is a new phenomena in which i think the policies are going to be more favorable for the youngsters to come in and contribute freely with hand holding from isro 
and the other organizations with the policy would need tweaking long term projects and long term programs and assured uh, uh, you know roadmaps can be unfolded by synergization of all of us together thank you very much uh, ladies and gentlemen thank you general pannu you mentioned the resilience and looking over it we have two colleagues with us who actually braved and adventured into the space sector even before it was liberalized so let me invite uh, rohan first to share his thoughts on the reforms and uh, his expertise in the next 2 3 minutes before we go into a more open ended conversation rohan and then parth uh, hi mudit uh, am i audible yes please go ahead uh, i would like to thank uh, mr raghavan and team at giving me the startup community the new space ecosystem uh, here in country and i would i would also like to tell that uh, there is a thriving and vibrant uh, new space ecosystem with uh, uh, many startups uh, coming uh, these days and uh, as uh, general pannu said it's honey to our ears um, uh, uh, you know reacting to this particular uh, news which we uh, saw yesterday i have always maintained that uh, space industry is something like software industry what it is today and it will create a lot of jobs in the foreseeable future and as industry is moving towards industry 4.0 where uh, machines are taking over majority of the jobs but space is a field where you need talent and uh, you need people a lot of people to come and give solutions and uh, in india from india what we can offer as i said space is global we have lots to offer we should think space as a global industry and for the global community to come and look at indian projects and indian solutions this uh, particular um, uh, body which or uh, news uh, uh, which came out yesterday is an important step and uh, we are ready the talent is there in the country and everybody is ready to step in and we want to offer um, Uh, what we can, and also we have the risk-taking appetite, and uh, I hope. And with this, uh, we believe that we can be uh, number one uh, in the new space ecosystem and uh, a formidable force for the foreseeable future. Thank you, Mudit. Thank you, Ron. Parth. Thank you, Mudit, and thank you, Professor Vijay Raghavan sir, for uh, having me here. and uh, i must start by saying pranam to dr kasuri rangan who is my mentor and guru and without whom i wouldn't have been an aerospace engineer today and from the earliest days uh, isro has been inspiring uh, indian minds towards science and technology and we have such incredible talent in the country which travels all around the world to absorb knowledge uh, thanks to this government and the honorable prime minister's visionary reform many uh, would now be able to apply their knowledge uh, towards india's development in the space sector and allow our entrepreneurs to boldly go where few have gone before to understand the significance of this uh, reform uh, let me share a global perspective with you the space industry is going through a rapid evolution at the moment uh, new constellations are bringing 28 terabits per second of bandwidth online which is a 20x jump relative to today that roughly equals the total amount of uh, bandwidth we as a, a human species generate per second uh, while satellites have traditionally taken 3 to 4 years to produce airbus for instance now produces four satellites per day uh, electric propulsion rapid miniaturization and cost reduction are actually challenging previously held beliefs about the capability limits of space based platforms and access to space is being commoditized globally Uh, as an example uh, my professor at stanford uh, challenged the uh, class to put a satellite inside a, a soda can which uh, led to the invention of the cubesat and satellites can now be manufactured on the same assembly lines as smartphones and uh, constellations can be upgraded with the same rapidity as software releases so what this evolution is brought about uh, mainly by the uh, private sector on a global basis uh, if you were to consider uh but the scale of this evolution is enabled by the public sector uh the benefit of the private sector uh uh is catering not just to the national need but also being able to cater to a much broader international market but that also means that we're competing against companies that are hosted in countries that already have a highly developed policy framework and access to capital take new zealand for instance 
they, they didn't even have a space agency before 2016, but one of their homegrown companies, Rocket Labs, had over the 10 years prior uh, developed a successful small sat launch vehicle. Uh, so the government created the country's first space agency and policy framework in just 18 months to support the growth of similar companies, uh, nudging Australia to also do the same thing. India can become the global hub for space activities. Uh, and uh, what does success look like? To me, uh, success looks uh, like when talent and companies across the world come to India for affordable and world-class space-enabled products and services, where a satellite and a mobile tower aren't viewed any differently, where our rocket launches become almost as routine as uh, cargo aircraft operations, and where, where space technology becomes required curriculum, uh, especially for our uh, armed forces, who achieve operational superiority because of our indigenous, indigenously built uh, space systems, and where food we eat is produced with greater yield by farmers and fishermen who rely on machine learning derived predictions from space-based sensors. So uh, in summary, predictable policy is a prerequisite to building a robust national space sector, uh, and pushing the country towards even greater self-reliance. Uh, and now what we're going to need is greater market awareness for new and emerging services, investor awareness, uh, we will also need the insurance companies and financial institutions to buy and sell risk in the space sector. But most importantly, we're going to need brave entrepreneurs to come forward and take India to new heights uh, in space after this uh, historic step. Thank you, Parth. Thank you for such a wide-ranging overview of the sector and some very interesting insights from New Zealand and other countries. Uh, now, if I can go to the kind of questions you're getting from the audience, I'll raise one question to Dr. Bidoshi which is, uh, what would it take for India to produce companies like SpaceX or the other companies that Parth mentioned? Would there be competition for Indian space uh, sector? And how would it be free, free and fair to ensure a level playing field? What, what can India do to produce and attract companies like SpaceX and others? And others are also the, welcome to share their thoughts after Dr. Vidushi. Okay, so um, I think the trick here is not to bring SpaceX in. I think the trick is to um, create your own SpaceX, whatever, you know, with the, for the next generation. So we're at a time right now where we've moved from these multi-billion dollar missions from like the Hubble Space Telescope at NASA, which was my first job out of university, to the point where we're building um, handheld satellites, CubeSats, which I think everybody here is familiar with. Um, this is a CubeSat that was actually built by one of our team members in his apartment. And you can launch one of these for a few hundred thousand dollars. And um, in his case, he's an engineering student. He has the background. But I think we have this enormous opportunity right now to create the next SpaceX by tapping the greatest resource that India has, which is its human capital. We have people who are very interested in space. And what I find is I do a lot of public speaking. It's very easy to get people excited about the space sector. It's inspirational. It's spiritual. People really get very much into what you're trying to tell them about astronomy or space. But I find that there's a real gap between that and a sense of tangibility and access to the sector. People think that, oh, that's too difficult for me. There are no jobs. I wouldn't even know where to start. And so our key here, and this is a great moment, is we can actually come in and provide a structured training and education program, not just for students who are in engineering programs who are already thinking about technology, but we're talking about building a true global ecosystem where India takes the lead. And to build an ecosystem, you have to move from just doing proof of technology, which has been how things have been my entire career. We build something, we test it, we fly it, does it work? Yes, what do we do next? Going from all these kinds of groundbreaking technologies, you have to add on another layer where you're actually providing commercial services, consumer-driven technology and services. And in order to do that, we're going to need people from the legal sector, which has been mentioned in terms of regulations. We will need people from finance. Obviously, startups need funding. Um, there are 1,700 startups in the world today in the space sector. Less than 5% of those are based in India. We, we need to change that number. And in order to effectively bring startups up to speed, we need people who are not just doing the tech. We're going to need business people. We're going to need people in social services to help us contextualize space technology to make it usable here on Earth. We're going to need people in education. And in my view, the way to really bring this into the, um, into the current move, uh, movement and make sure that we hit that target of 2040, reaching a multi-trillion dollar economy, 
is to provide training to people in all sectors, professionals who already have expertise, bringing them in and repurposing their skills for the space sector. And also the key here is to bring young people in and train them in space and let them brainstorm and come up with some fantastic nonlinear thinking and solutions that they will be able to contribute. Any others who would like to weigh in on this question? How do we inspire Indian entrepreneurs and Indian companies of scale and level of SpaceX and others? Well, I can come in if it's okay, Mudal. Sir, please. Yeah, um, you know, what we've seen uh, over the last few years is a spurt in the number of entrepreneurs, number of innovators, and we have seen most of them come in sectors where they can have an impact on society using technology which is readily available. Uh, we've also seen a spurt in the e-commerce sector. Now the challenge is how much more can we get into the truly innovative deep tech sector and that poses a big problem because uh, it is non-trivial uh, because that re relies on decades of investment and uh, experience in much larger economies. But the technology today is, over the last couple of years again, last you know, decade actually, has changed so that miniaturization and the powering of miniaturization becomes feasible and these are also modular. Now, this now allows deep tech to come in in a big way. Yet for that to scale, it has to be both innovative and competitive. Opening up of space allows extremely innovative and globally competitive ideas and technologies to come in. The demands on those technologies are so high in terms of quality in space that their use in more regular uh, terrestrial applications becomes much easier if they succeed in space. So the inspiration which space brings will allow technologies to be tested out on scale over there in terms of their quality and their economy and their miniaturization, allowing them to be deployed on Earth much more easily. Thank you, sir. Do I see Rohan wanted to say something? Uh, yes, Mundit, adding to uh, what uh, Professor Vijayaraghavan said and what Bidushi said, uh, we would require a lot of outreach in the country and uh, as, as you know, there's not enough clarity among the common public what space is contributing to the economy. So what I would like to suggest is in the upcoming uh, in-space uh, portfolio, we need to formally institute a division which comprises of social scientists, economists, space technologists, everybody coming together to roll a framework which would enable and inspire more youth to stay back in the country and contribute uh, to this uh, exciting area. Thank you. Thank you. May I add a word to this discussion? Uh, Mugin? Sir, so please. Sir, so please. Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir, please go ahead. We can hear you, sir. You know, this is adding more number of entrepreneurs to this question that you wanted to respond to right now? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the important thing is there are several low-hanging fruits today in the space activities, uh, whether it is in the remote sensing applications, whether it is innovative use of uh, navigational systems, innovative use of communication satellites, the role of telemedicine and teleeducation in the context of connectivities, and also the level to which we can bring in new areas like artificial intelligence, expert systems, and so on into this. The important thing on this is, first and foremost, is that uh, there is a tremendous scope for areas of Earth observation system data to be handled and provided as a service uh, on a scale which is currently not adequate, but which can be expanded through this kind of a thing. Investments are not large, the risk element is less, but at same time, the demands are going to be high. The variety of demands are even more ex ex extensive. This is the, the second aspect of it is the fact that there are a number of technologies that ISRO has developed for various purposes, which is related to the engine development or the rocket development or satellite development or even ground systems development. 
they are all things which are a part of what you may call as a spin off technologies available the question of a good spin off assessment of what this kind of an activity can lead to in terms of in an exhaustive way and i think this is another area in which we can really help the entrepreneurs to come out with some that we come out with suggestions we make them the proposals and they pick up some of these kind of thing the choices can be made for this kind of a thing on both I, i there are many other things i can say but this gives you an example of the kind of things that the current effort itself entrepreneurs whether using a good material for an year long thing or there have been even discussion you create an artificial art which will be there for the questions uh, related to how do you use image processing to improve the early detection of certain diseases in fact i should say the nasa has a special group for this kind of a thing and this special group what it does is it only identifies all these spin offs and in areas like medicine health education and so on they separate it out and then many companies come over and take the technology adopt it and make it into a marketable item i think this process i think can be set in motion and it can have tremendous impact in terms of encouraging a youngster to have in the probably a fairly assured uh, direction in terms of an investment uh, which is not as risky as putting it into a rocket or a satellite thank you sir yeah. i think uh, shivan what uh, what our customer uh, sir was telling sir uh, this is exactly one of the objectives now we are uh, we are given uh, as a part of ifa and uh, that uh, bringing that uh, technologies developed by the, the islo to that outside mainly for the spin up that uh, actually is not part of that uh, that the in space activities is a part of that the nsl activity so anyway that is that whether it through in space or nsl that any public will be definitely reaching the to public and they can really take uh, take a part of this activity thank you sir thank you dr shivan um, let me check if any other of the other panelists want to come in on this before we go to the next question Aisha, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Mudit. Our next question is a follow-up question to what just Dr. Kasuri Rangan and Dr. Shivan mentioned. So both of you have worked at ISRO, and ISRO has done tremendous work and attempted audacious missions under your leadership. We really want to hear from you that how can India as a nation focus on developing capacity and capability for the space science in Indian researchers and young students before they come and become entrepreneurs. So any thoughts around that would be very inspiring for our younger generation watching the panel discussion. Dr. Shivan, would you like to go first? Yes, yes. There is, uh, it is also a very good uh, thing and we have provision for that also. And uh, we are uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, announcing that opportunities from isro for uh, developing that cutting edge uh, technologies by academia and uh, we already have a very system that is called uh, respond system but uh, that uh, forget about that one. now we are proposing that a formal announcement of opportunity we are uh, going to have as a part of this reform by this process that is that uh, whatever the technologies that are required to develop the opportunities will be given for the the uh, the, the the students that uh, academia before they become the entrepreneurs at the same time suppose that uh, it is not only simply that allowing that uh, an announcing opportunity definitely that uh, that uh, we will fund the required uh, the technology development at the same time if they wanted to they, they test their the system in our facility that also we allow them to do it so what the thing is that we need their brain everything else we will uh, support so their brain should not get out of our uh, india and uh, we want them to develop further so that uh, when they are growing they will become the real uh, entrepreneurs and uh, they can do much much more work than what uh, we are thinking that's what our aim so it is the system is in place so i want to 
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I think the younger generation is really excited to looking forward to all of these opportunities and see how they can also start engaging themselves in the space technologies. Dr. Kasturi Rangan, would you also like to share your thoughts about how we can really make this transition and inspire? You know, I inter instead of giving, yeah, yeah. Th thank you for this uh, thing. Uh, I would uh, specifically focus on one area uh, which is also related to space but which has a tremendous excitement among the younger minds, and that is astronomy and astrophysics. I mean, there are many other things which one can discuss about, but why I'm bringing this aspect is, you have a program in this, for example, where you have a planetary missions, and this is going to go from Chandrayaan to Venus and to Mars and uh, asteroids, and those, that is one other stars are kind of objective looking at the sun and its evolution and its uh, activity is the third aspect of it there's a fairly large amount of interest among the youngsters okay do we have an opportunity for them to get this and get them in those so that on one side they get into studying these aspects of it and where possible get into kind of a research and ultimately also take this as a route to understand the space program a little better with respect to the overall context. I think this exercise has not been done to the extent. For example, astronomy and astrophysics has been done with an university center for astronomy and astrophysics. But if you look at it with respect to a center for space science and the center of space science creates thinkers of tomorrow. And these thinkers are the people who can then work in space because they have been already enthused by the excitement of space. And uh, so this is one connection that one needs to bring in in a larger context of academy is through interfaces. And that is one way to do this. The second aspect is the same thing can be done, of course, with the industry. We try to do it with IISP and with IITs and so on. I think in, in technology in other areas where we need to create already ISRO is expanding and funding fairly large amount of programs in terms of specific areas like robotics for astronauts for uh, the lunar missions and things of that kind. But I think there is a scope for increasing this. And the third element is to the question of leadership. I, I think this is a little different from just taking interest in the area of specific areas, whether it's astronomy or technology or uh, re related areas. The leadership is a kind of a thing which needs to be grown. And this has a role both within the institution as well as there are specialized institutions which can do this in a separate band. I think the present leadership issue, and I'm sure Vijay will be able to say this a little more, uh, because he now is facing this problem not only across space, but in the overall context of science and technology and other institutions. I think we need to have a mechanism to create visionaries, thinkers, thought leaders, and people who have a broad picture of the role of science and technology in the context of social, economic, super strategic, and many other dimensions. I think the number who can talk on it with confidence with respect to the multiple dimensions and which leads to a good leadership is something we need to address. And I think this could be automatically a requirement when you try to increase the interface with the industries. There will be more youngsters who work in this kind of challenging areas, and probably many of them will throw up as alternate leaders, even for governmental systems like ISRO. I say if I may add something just here and share a little bit. Um, um, we, you may be aware, and uh, I, I think Dr. Sivan has given his blessings for Atal Innovation Mission to partner with ISRO, especially in our Atal Tinkering Lab. We have now more than 5,000 tinkering labs. And many of them are going to be introducing uh, space technology based modules. We already have something called ETL space module, but we are going to be introducing along modules and space labs uh, to be integrated into our adult tinkering lab. And that is work in progress. And the other is uh, we are planning to launch very specific challenges uh, that ISRO uh, and um, the industry needs so that we can uh, stimulate the necessary innovation from startups. Uh, these are uh, challenges not only from the point of view of how to support the space industry, but how to leverage the space industry and space applications for the betterment of communities and community innovation and so on. So there is uh, these all these things are already uh, in plan. And I think this will be a wonderful opportunity for private sector to further get involved and the young students to get inspired. And we launched uh, recently Thinker From Home module where one of the biggest 
uh, interest by young students in schools was one segment on space that we did uh, and a webinar that we connected and somebody one of the talented students had shown the CubeSat and, and how they went about developing it. And that uh, actually created tremendous interest and inspired many people. So I just want to share that uh, little bit of information. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Ramanan. In fact, we are all so excited. I believe that I'm also so personally motivated to take up one of these courses soon enough, as soon as they, are get, they get launched and they are open to everyone. Thank you so much. Now we'll also move on to Parth and Rohan and try and get a perspective from there because they have really been entrepreneurs and taken this step before everybody else and try and get a perspective from there because they have really been entrepreneurs and taken this step before everybody else could even think about them. So Parth, as a young startup, I'm sure you are excited about the recent reforms. Could you also elaborate a bit on how these reforms are going to create a positive impact on the growth of Skylo's business? And thereby, how will it really lead to faster improvements and applications in areas such as disaster management, agriculture, and other areas? And how do you also get to bring on more private players into and create a consortium sort of an approach to make a huge impact? Well, thank you, Aisha, uh, for the question. Um, I believe that these uh, reforms will create a path of least resistance uh, for entrepreneurs uh, uh, who are solving some of the greatest challenges uh, of, of India. In fact, space is uh, sounds like a very distant subject, but it's in a very meaningful way uh, to farming, to fisheries, uh, you know, the television that we watch, navigation services and weather prediction. Uh, for instance, uh, the work uh, that we're doing uh, to connect anything from a soil moisture sensor, which can help completely digitize uh, the soil health program, all the way to connecting uh, fishermen uh, across the, the country who venture out and brave their lives uh, and don't have any affordable means of uh, being connected. Uh, they can now, in fact, be connected to markets. And just imagine uh, a sector where, where no transformation has happened for centuries. You know, business has been uh, conducted the same way and fish are sold in auction you can now all of a sudden have access to digital e-commerce platforms, even if you're 300 nautical miles away from the shore. And that's the power of space, being able to completely transform industries. Uh, and my belief is all industries in India are going to become tech enabled. And uh, the terrain of India, the challenges that we face, uh, you know, penetrating uh, data into the remotest areas of India is going to be absolutely critical to make sure that uh, these uh, uh, applications are all inclusive, uh, that our uh, farmers can participate. It contributes meaningfully to our soldiers on the border uh, who, who uh, uh, yet uh, 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 have a requirement for greater access to everything from imagery, uh, from space uh, to connectivity. Uh, so I'm personally extremely excited uh, by these reforms. Uh, it'll allow both me and uh, you know, many of my peers to continue doing very meaningful work for the country and you know my my uh, uh, i always uh, work on that which gives me goosebumps and uh, of course it's it's uh, very uh, uh, heartening that i can uh, continue doing uh, work for the country thanks rohan that was extremely inspiration and like we all are hoping now how more and more private companies can also come and really transform the sector and the space to help india I'll now hand over to Mudit to ask his next, next question to the panelists. Uh, thank you, Aisha. Uh, thanks, Parth. Um, Rohan, if you also wanted to maybe share your journey in space, how you became an entrepreneur, we have a very large young audience for this uh, stream today. Uh, what your company does, the technology, and how these reforms or this change in the sector will enable your company to be at a faster pace and go into a larger, larger Larger space, if you will. So, Ron, if you, if you can. Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, I believe space is so vast and uh, we have to explore it pretty quickly. And, um, you know, uh, we started Bellatrix uh, I, when uh, I was age of 19 uh, when we started Bellatrix. And uh, we registered this as a company in 2015. And there were only a handful of companies back then. But now, within just four years, from 2015 to 2019, and you can see there are more than 30 space companies in India. So that it's a, it's a positive sign that there are youngsters coming forward to provide solutions 
complement complementing to what isro is providing of course with isro's hand holding so we had the blessing of uh, you know isro giving our first order to us uh, we work in the area of space propulsion systems we develop electric and chemical propulsion systems for satellites uh, as i was saying uh, this is definitely a policy that recognizes opportunity but on the other hand a lot needs to be known because we uh, startups not necessarily you know need to play in the downstream there are startups which can give lot of uh, technology complement with the country in the upstream activities as well and uh, that needs to be recognized and uh, from my side what i would like to tell tell is there should be startup representation in in space so yesterday we heard our honorable chairman of isro speech where in space would comprise of academicians technocrats scientists and industry experts so has industry comes with a different mindset a startup working space has different set of requirements and a different mindset so uh, this our representation in in space would also help uh, you know propel this particular uh, policy into a good opportunity and uh, uh, there's lots for us to do and uh, we are there in the country to contribute to our space program for both peaceful as well as defense purposes there needs to be a clarity on regulations export regulations even though we can offer you know world class products but uh, still uh, if there are no proper regulations you know there's a thin line between uh, defense and space when you're working on space technology so all these things uh, if comes clear on paper i think we have the edge uh, to prove what uh, spacex has done in the us i think there are many companies in india which you know can do and uh, for us personally this is a very welcoming Thank you, Rahul. General Panu, if I can quickly get your thoughts on the Defence Space Agency as a consumer, and how the evolution or the expansion of services from both private and government players like ISRO, how would that evolve for, let's say, a government consumer, which is already starting to look at broader options? and how does this change affect or or would it affect how dsa looks at the options in in its service provision uh thank you for that uh, you are aware that we have a very large uh, conventional uh, as well as strategic forces in our country uh, having uh, now raised the space agency and also uh, the cyber agency uh, you find that there is a a lot of specialization which has come into warfare uh there are systems and systems of systems um also uh, a lot of remote uh, warfare uh, is something uh, which is going to impact how the how the battles are fought uh, what is important here is that once we get uh, the uh, entrepreneurship uh, uh, by the startups or uh, by industry Uh, largely contributing to the growth of this technology uh, this adds on to the strength of a military really speaking we have more techno warriors we have more space warriors which are available to us and also this will not only empower the military but also give us an edge in the world on what we bring to the table when the uh, indigenization of the defense industry is concerned we can even go for export because our uh products are going to be more valued uh, outside and purely from the business point of view it is not only that you provide for your own armed forces which is uh, through niche te- military technology but also uh, you uh, largely get accepted uh, in the world uh, that you have a technology which is not only making your military superior at home uh, which builds a deterrence in any case uh, but also brings in a lot of uh, uh, traction in the overall defense industry uh, i i don't know why i al- always use this uh, expression of hemoglobin i think uh, the space uh, technology brings in hemoglobin to the digital warfare and digital uh, platforms uh, without this i think uh, it loses all the traction and the power uh, the number of interactions that i have had with startups and i feel uh, even uh, when we were talking about the cyber agency is that we always worried about the encryption and the security part uh, we have to have a huge amount of indigenization in uh, in our uh, chip making you know our, we have to have uh, our own 
design and development and fabrication of it. We have to contribute to nanotechnology. We have to bring in better efficiency in how we operate our systems. We have to bring in more data management and more uh, data uh, transfer for applications which are going to be based on uh, artificial intelligence, which is going to uh, make the whole uh, uh, military platforms uh, work uh, better. Uh, as a result, you find that uh, the 5G IoT, which in the military parlance would be Internet of Battle Things or Internet uh, of uh, Military Things, IOMT, IOBT. Uh, these are going to be possible only because of the space-based uh, connectivity. They cannot be based on the terrestrial network because terrestrial network is, is a fixed network. It, it, it suffers from uh, 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 you know, a very fixed kind of uh, uh, connectivity. Uh, so therefore, uh, when you talk about uh, uh, the future, uh, where 5G, IOMT, uh, IOBT applications are concerned, I think space is the only answer. And the homegrown industry, uh, where it is fielded at home, all the uh, transponders are built here, all our uh, ground stations are built here. I think we'll be more comfortable to uh, ensure. Uh, and uh, you see, uh, there is a confidence building, uh, which is also there between the military and what uh, the uh, technology brings. There's hardly any confidence sometimes when you bring in uh, a product which is imported and you do not know from where it has come along with it. Uh, so I suppose unless we do it ourselves, uh, we are not going to be truly Atam Nirbhar. And I suppose the Prime Minister, uh, really speaking, when we talk about independence, real independence is being self-reliant, and self-reliance really means homegrown technology, homegrown grown production. And I suppose it will bring in a lot of profit uh, back, load back into our system. Um, uh, that is, I would say, a huge contributor towards uh, five prime minister uh, laid out in the Niti Aayog paper, India at 75. Uh, I suppose when you put all these documents together, you find this is a huge enabler. And as I said in the beginning of it, I find that this is music. And, and this is going to be a huge empowerment, not only for the government of India, not only for the industry, not only for the military, but as Indian community, we are very proud of it. Thank you, sir. Uh, now we'll go and take some questions from the audience, which has been sh sharing a lot of questions online. Aisha? Yes, in the interest of time, we'll take up one question from the audience. This is from Mr. Gokul Ravi. He's asking if it is correct to assume that with the recent reforms, now the private players will get the license and the permission to launch their own vehicles and rockets into orbit. So is that a correct understanding is what he's wanting to know from our uh, panelists. Can I invite maybe Dr. Shivan to share his thoughts on this? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, they are right. Their understanding is right. And uh, by this reform, that uh, the private players will be uh, allowed to build, uh, build launch vehicle. And uh, private players will be allowed to launch their launch vehicle also. So I'm very happy that uh, already some people are picking up, making launch vehicle and uh, ready for launch. Yes, sir. So we are extremely happy. <laughs> and we are well, welcome to them to see the quota for launch at the earliest. Yes, Great, thank you, sir. I think that's extremely helpful. And like we said, all these people are extremely looking forward to see how they can get support from the government to be able to participate in the journey. Do you want to ask the next question, Muzit? Yes. We got a question from Anshuman Mahapatra that how will the reorganization of the space assets affect the future launch vehicles and other existing programs like Chandrayaan, Mangalyaan? I guess this reflects the interest that the general audience has in ISRO's operations. They've been mentioning unified launch vehicle, admire, RLV. I guess the question is, how does this reform or how do these changes affect the existing programs which the, which the audience really cares about and follows very closely? OK, this, uh, this question is, uh, they are very anxious. And uh, I'm sure the similar question I asked yesterday throughout the day to me by media also. For uh, this uh, question, my answer is that uh, none of these activities of Israel is going to affect it. 
all that uh, that a unified launch vehicle heavy deep launch vehicle development or the advanced mission capacity building everything will be will be continuing as we planned and no not a bit change what we are telling is number one that apart from these things there are huge potential for the applications that is that uh, the space applications like uh, Mr. Bhatsarathy told very clearly, and I also have been telling, this huge potential is untapped. It is like a hidden treasure. It is, it is, it is hidden in space, I am telling this treasure. That, to unlock that one, definitely, that is, uh, I want the extra hand. So instead of depending on that, uh, the ISRO's 17,000 people, I am looking for hand from 130 crore people. That's what I'm trying to tell. It is that uh, it is not that uh, ISRO's activity or uh, that the program the Chandrayaan or Gaganyaan. It is not going to be stopped or not that. That will be there. But at the same time, along with that, uh, that uh, private uh, players are enabled to do that activity. They will be given. Uh, opportunity to develop the new technologies in the advanced missions also. So they have more uh, 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 opening for doing that work, this one. So otherwise that it shows the activity or it shows the programs like Chandrayaan, Gaganyaan, the other activities not going to be affected, it will be going on as we planned. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for a very reassuring answer. Um, I'll take one, actually, combining two or three questions, uh, which is that a, a lot of the growth in the US space sector uh, was because of funding by start uh, funding by NASA or startups and funding through SBI, etc. So, Dr. Bidushi and um, Rohan and Parth, what kind of encouraging support or what kind of uh, financial support and other kinds of support can you would you like to request from ISRO or this uh, the broader number of agencies and what is the kind of support that you think would help uh, expand the industry quickly and we'll take this question uh, the answers to this question and then uh, go to Dr. Nijiragwan right after. Do you want me to start? Yes please Dr. Vishy. Okay, so um, one of the most exciting things that I found in the last five to 10 years is that space has become a part of the identity in um, Indians. So it's no longer seen as this thing that other nations do. It's something that Indians actually realize that they themselves can participate in. And so we have buy-in and that I think is key. And of course we need funding and of course we're gonna need government support and on the commercial side, we're gonna need investors to come in. But let me take a moment and put myself in the position of all those people who are watching us. We have young people watching us and then we also have experienced people watching us. Once they finish watching this video, what are their options for learning more? There's a huge knowledge gap. So at this point, they have two options. Option one, you go, you sign up for a multi-year engineering curriculum, you commit yourself and you become a STEM nerd just like me. The other option is you go and you Google and you look for things here, there, and you get a very spotty understanding of what's available. What I would love to see is a structured um, knowledge base for people who come in, whether they're in STEM, whether they're young, whether they're experienced and want to do a career shift. I would love to see a structured way for people to enter and gain the knowledge that they need so that they can contribute to this multi-trillion dollar economy that we are talking about for the coming decades. Thanks. Thank you. Any quick questions, uh, quick comments, Parth, Rohan? Sure. Uh, uh, I, I think to, to answer your question on uh, what kind of uh, support uh, the private sector would, would need uh, to create the kind of outcomes that you were referring to. Um, uh, so first of all, I, I think I'd like to say that the, the contributions of the private sector plus the public sector, when viewed together as Team India, uh, would significantly boost India's strategic uh, capabilities uh, in space. And uh, I think that uh, if you want to take uh, an example, for instance, ISRO is uh, in fact the world's uh, launch pad in many ways. Uh, when in February of 2017, we had the very inspiring launch of 104 simultaneous satellites 
Uh, 88 of them uh, belonged uh, to my peer company, uh, Planet Labs uh, in California. Uh, uh, in referring to ge what General Panu was, uh, sir was talking about with respect to the uh, recent images that everybody's been seeing in the news media, uh, uh, companies like that uh, uh, often get a majority of their funding from government being a customer. Uh, so uh, as perhaps Rohan also mentioned, uh, and uh, Dr. Kasirangan sir also mentioned that the procurement policies of the government uh, perhaps need a double click uh, to ensure uh, that uh, uh, startups have a very easy way to access uh, government as a customer, uh, both domestically and also internationally. Uh, and I personally believe that uh, the private sector will be a force multiplier uh, for uh, uh, ISRO and our national capability. Uh, and when uh, the talent of ISRO and the private sector combine, I think the outcome is going to be a quantum leap uh, for the country. And I'm, I'm very excited to collaborate. Thank you, Parth. Thank you. This has been a brilliant conversation. I think all of us learned a lot. And I'm seeing the responses on YouTube, an amazing amount of response. I now request Dr. K. Vijay Raghavan, the Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India, to share his thoughts and talk about his insights into how this process is unfolding and how, what he expects. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Mudit. Um, it's uh, really wonderful to hear Dr. Shivan give his overview, followed by Dr. Kasturi Rangan. Together, they symbolize uh, a huge and long tradition of quality uh, at ISRO and also now its future. Um, you know, at the heart of this, um, we must look at what uh, people like Vikram Sarabhai and Satish Dhawan said about ISRO's role. And ISRO is so deeply at its foundation tied to society uh, in a manner which very few organizations in the world are. And that's something which has, ISRO has always kept in mind. And that's something that this new partnership with industry must also keep in mind. And the reason I say that is that our future the future of the planet hinges on the ability of us as humans and humans have become the stewards of the planet as opposed to mere survivors of the planet because of our engineering and our use of technology and our future hinges on our ability to deal with at a planetary level with climate change with ecology and the environment if we can deal with all these three at the same time deal with sustainable development, we would have created a better life for future generations. And that's a very complicated challenge. What role does space have in this challenge, which seems so terrestrial? And that was a criticism which ISRO had at its foundation, that why is India investing in space research, space technology, at a time when it had so many problems at the time of independence and a little later? And we have seen the impact of ISRO on our society, which has been so enormous. Our education system, our communication system, owes in no small, our agriculture, our health, owes in no small measure to the success of ISRO. So this uh, kind of dis, uh, discordant note between cutting edge technology and people's welfare uh, has been disproved by ISRO's very existence over the years. Now ISRO is opening up to a new kind of partnership which allows our brilliant young people, liberate them to get into the use of technology in multiple ways. And you've heard from uh, you know, Bidushi, uh, from Parth, from Rohan uh, on one aspect of how this needs to be and can be done. And from General Panu will be enhanced by this uh, use of technology. Now this inspirational a uh, view towards space, which India has and has as at a level of ownership, which Vidushi so nicely referred to, is something which is really vital and will spur right now. Now, ISRO in its new avatar has already decided to, even as it puts down these structures, to take on all these new responsibilities right away. So this really opens this whole sector enormously. Now, Coming back to what it can do uh, in terms of real impact, we can see that there are major missions which the government has undertaken where space plays a very critical role. 
And these, for example, uh, let me give you three of them. One is the uh, water mission, where the aim is to get water on tap to every village. That requires the use of sensor technology, pipes, and uh, water supply, linking demand and supply in specific ways. And there, at the back end of all of this, is communication in real time collecting information about water supply, whether it's actually reaching or not, whether it's going to the tap or not, and feeding back. There are many terrestrial systems which will do this, but many of these are linked to space, and many of these technologies are really very vital in terms of ensuring that not only do you have the plumbing, but you have the water going through. Soil is another, agriculture is another. The excessive use of fertilizers, pesticides, water in an indiscriminate manner, and the poor understanding of soil quality uh, in a micro sense, is a very critical uh, area which needs to be addressed. Here too, new technology, available technologies, PARTH is an example, uh, allows us to collect information at fine levels of granularity, address that and feed back to the farmer. Recently, there have been liberating structures uh, to farmers in terms of how they can connect directly uh, to the market in multiple ways. That, those the new structures combined with these technologies allow farmers to not only look after their land well, but reach the market in a much better way. So these, again, are different kinds of technologies which are, going to be, uh, um, which are going to be open. I'd like to finally end by pointing out what Dr. Kasturi Rangan so elegantly said, that the importance of research and astronomy. I would add to that that, you know, both astronomy and astrophysics will benefit enormously from space research in ways which, again, our scientists uh, will be liberated to use, partner with industry and use in ways which were unimaginable. Uh, you know, as we heard again from all of you, the uh, micro level, uh, the compaction of uh, uh, satellites and circuits in the size of a soda can, as Partho said, uh, and also the communication technologies allow extraordinary scientific experiments to be done. Those will lead back into understanding of new physics, new science, in a manner which will be incredibly valuable here. But directly, other kinds of research also can be very valuable uh, in terms of uh, what happens on Earth. One of the most inspiring examples is the uh, NASA's GRACE satellite, uh, two satellites launched in collaboration with the university system. These two satellites are in orbit at, you know, a hair's breadth fixed distance from each other. So when they go around the Earth, if they have are changes in sea level or melting ice or mountains, their distance is altered and the correction allows you to estimate very finely rising sea levels or melting ice or hills and so on and so forth. And this is an incredible use of an earth level understanding of the consequences of climate change. And those are the kinds of experiments now where Indian scientists, Indian technologists, can, and much better ones to can design and implement. So this is really a very, very promising step forward. Um, and you know, this is something which we should grasp. Now, there will be an inevitable question about where we will get the resources for all of these new opportunities. And we must keep in mind that this is not a linear process. First, give me the money that I'll do this. Then give me some more money, I'll do that, and so on. This is a bootstrapping mechanism where you have to be audacious and pitch what you can do. And if you pitch in a manner which is both effective, which has impact on society or on industry, or is just merely inspirational, money will come from anywhere within the government and from outside. I'd like to end by saying that this has to be a partnership between government and industry. The success of industry is the success of government. The success of this partnership is the success of all people. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. In the interest of the time now, we would like to conclude. And on behalf of the Atal Innovation Mission, Niti Aayog, Principal Scientific Advisors Office and all the audience, I would really like to thank all the panelists for taking the time to speak with us and most importantly to inspiring thousands of our viewers.
and we are extremely glad to be inviting all the young entrepreneurs to con to contributing to the growth story of india for the space sector and we all strongly believe that with these reforms india will successfully achieve its goal of sending a manned mission into space by 2022 on board gaganyaan as our prime minister had laid it out and we would really become the fourth nation in doing so so thank you very much to all the panelists and the viewers and let us hope that we all stay safe together in this strange time of the world pandemic and leverage this up this as an opportunity to unleash the creative entrepreneur within thank you so much everyone thank you so much thank you okay bunda thank you thank you bye thank you everyone bye thank you thank you okay sir thank you thank you vijay and achivan thank you thanks thank you everybody thank you just a message i'm loading you vijay say bond